Hey, how you doing, family and friends? Pastor Jay here. Just wanted to give you a quick update on how we're doing with uh, our move to get into the building. You know, we had a few issues, one being the horrific weather we've had, high winds, a lot of rain, damaged our roof, not just on the chapel roof, which we're getting repaired, but also on a couple other parts of the church. But because of the heavy saturation, the machinery could not be brought on the campus. As soon as it's dry enough, they'll knock that out. Number two, uh, we have to make sure that uh, all the carpet has been steam cleaned throughout the building. So we've got a contractor that's doing that work uh, on uh, July the 19th, Monday, July 19th. So the church will be cleaned out and steamed out. That'll be great. Matter of fact, let me thank all the volunteers that came out to move all the chairs and tables. God bless y'all. And if you, did, you missed that move and you want to volunteer to help, Remember, July 24th from 9 to 11, we're going to move everything back to get ready uh, in all those areas. So July 24th from 9 in the morning to 11, which is a Saturday morning, we need everybody to come out to help us get all those things moved back in. Uh, the issue we had with uh, some of our audio video equipment, we got a good contractor to come in to make sure that's all replaced. And as soon as all the equipment is in, the installer will bring everything in and make sure that we're all up to date in our audio and video and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Let me say thank you to all our volunteers and all of our ministries, all of you that came and did your walk through, our ushers, our deacons, our, our, our health ministry team, you came through, got your walkthroughs done, really happy about that. And a special thank you to our uh, scholarship ministry after uh, doing their wonderful move on ceremony a few weeks ago, what they did on top of that is they, amongst themselves, gave an offering to pay for four doors uh, in, our, in our new hallway of our administrative wing. Thank you guys for raising that money. They've been ordered. They'll be erected soon. Hey, God bless all of you for your support. This is Pastor Jay saying I'll see you soon. God bless you and welcome to Vernon Park Church of God's Digital Worship on this second Sunday in the month of July. I'm Pastor Gerald January and I'm really grateful for your viewership today, your attendance, even digitally. Would you enlarge our crowd right now by sharing the good news that the good news is about to go forth uh, right now. So share with your friends and your family that we're about to worship in the word on this summer morning. Uh, before we do so, uh, take your Bible in your hand and let's uh, do as we always do, whether we're on campus or digitally. Let's affirm why we're here today and that's to receive God's word. Let's all say it together. God sent his word to me and I expect it to speak to me and show me my purpose. Every day I'm making progress in my purpose as I study and I live by God's word. Amen? Amen. And it is true. We need God's word today like we need it in generations past. And so, therefore, Bible student uh, and brothers and sisters, what we're doing today, we're getting deeper in the word because in seasons like these where things are changing, norms are becoming redefined, it's important that you know what your norm is and what uh, God's word says to you as you go forward in your life. Uh, we're in part three of our series uh, this week. Uh, of our series entitled Dreams and Realities. Very, very interesting uh, sermon topic today. It's uh, real friends, real friends. And we're going to start in Nehemiah chapter 2 this week uh, as we progress in Nehemiah's story. Go, go to Nehemiah chapter 2 and let's read verses 11 and 12 and then we'll skip down to verse number 17 um, for our reading. And the Bible says, I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I set out during the night with a few men. I had not told anyone uh, what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. I skip down to verse number 17. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we're in? Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. Once again, our topic for today, real friends, real friends. Uh, we've been talking um, the last couple of weeks and examining the scripture in Nehemiah and uh, using his story or this episode in his life to, to actually uh, to talk about this um, idea of dreams and realities. What is a dream? Well, simply put, it's a mental picture 
of something that's not present. Uh, that's what a dream is. That's what a dream is. But dreams can lead to realities. Over the last couple of weeks, we've hit some topics. Uh, let's review those real quick, just a few of those. One was that you got to dare to dream. How do you make a dream come true? You got to dare to dream. Why? Because dreams motivate us. Dreams motivate us. We're not talking about fantasies. Fantasies might just excite you, but that's for the moment. But a dream can motivate your life. Uh, we also talked about uh, last time we were together, know what it takes to make your dream come true. You, you, you got to know what it takes to make your dream come true. Don't shortchange yourself in that area. Uh, close related to that, become versed in the tools of your dream. Not only what it costs or time, but what are the tools needed to make your dream um, into a reality. Whether it's a building project, an education, uh, whether it's a weight loss program, whatever it might be. Um, you may want to go from being a renter to an owner. So how do you make that happen? You got to know the tools for that. And then um, today, um, let me just say for a second, you got to stick with the plan. You got a plan, stick with it. You know what your plan is? Uh, yeah, you're going to have some issues. And we're going to talk about some issues today. But you want to make sure you stick with your plan. Now, if, if these things are very interesting to you, and you said, man, I wish you had spent more time on that, just go back to uh, our website and go to the sermons, uh, the prior sermons, and you can look those up and, and see me preach again in a different jacket or tie. Anyway, uh, today, uh, let's start uh, in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 9. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 9. Um, he's now on his journey. And so he says in verse 9, So I went to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. If you remember last week, he was planning out his strategy. And before he left the king's side, who was the authority over many things, he got letters that would actually make it easier or make it appropriate for him not only to travel safely, but get the things he needed to complete the task. So what he's doing is he's uh, instituting his plan. He's working his plan. Who am I talking to today? Are you working, are you working your plan, whether it's for your family, your marriage, your education, um, coming out of quarantine? Do you have a plan? But give you, I'm just going to give you a few uh, keys today. Uh, write this one down in your notes. It'll help you out. And it, and it actually works with this uh, verse, uh, 2 and 9. And, and it's simply this. A good plan can stand the weight of delay, difficulty, or disappointment. A good plan can stand the weight of delay, difficulty, or disappointment. Uh, when you uh, set out on a dream, can I say this to you all in church uh, or outside of church? Trouble is common. Troubles are common. You're going to have troubles, but a good plan can make room for those. It can stand a good body blow. And so you got to make sure that your plan is, is, is together because no matter if you have delays or difficulties, and we at Vernon Park know a whole lot about delays and difficulty. doesn't mean we were failures. It's just part of what happened. But because things have been planned out, um, it's been able to sustain those delays, those difficulties, and God have mercy, those disappointments. Amen and amen. Um, Alexander White said something really interesting about Nehemiah. Uh, I'm not going to put it on the screen, but you may want to write this down. And in, in his historic document, he's writing about uh, Nehemiah. He said that Nehemiah was a self-contained man. A self-contained man. What does a self-contained person mean? It means that they have inside of them what it takes to keep them going, no matter what they're going through, what's going on around them. He was a self-contained man. And I believe that's why God chose him, even though he was at the side of the king, uh, living uh, in a totally different district, um, in a comfortable situation. But God knew he was a self-contained man. So he, he, he did not uh, crumble at outside uh, pressures. Um, but even self-contained people, Got to have some companions. Every Batman got to have a Robin. Uh, every Green Hornet got to have a Cato. Amen? And so the reality is that he needed people to walk with him. This was, this was a solitary dream, but he had to have uh, friends. 
Now, in the next two weeks, this week and next week, I'm going to talk about the two personalities that every dreamer meets along their journey. That's friend and enemy. Friend and enemy. So write down the word friend. Friend. What is a friend? Simple definition. Okay? Somebody that's attached to another person by affection or respect. Respect or affection. Friend. Um, in Senegal, they have a saying about friends. I love it. They say, when you know who his friend is, you know who he is. When you know who his friend is, you know who he is. Um, friendships, let me say this. All friendships are not lifelong, and they're not as uh, focused all during your life. Friendships can be tied to seasons. Um, and they can develop anywhere in the season. You can have a friend you met in third grade, and they become your school friend. And that's your best friend in school. Um, you may have a friend you met in college, and they become your college friend, maybe from your freshman through your junior or senior year. After you graduate, that friendship may fade or not even... Um, be in, 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 in the work or in action in your life because you go on to another spot. You can have co-worker best friends and dare I say you can have church best friends or friends, choir friends, or usher friends or preacher friends. Doc, how you doing? I mean, I've been in the ministry 40 something years now and I know, I mean, depending on who you hang out with, that is your friend. A friend, once again, somebody's attached to you by respect or affection. Friendship. And today I have just a, a few moments to talk about a few points about friendships. So let's jump into it real quick using Nehemiah. First point is this, number A, real friends walk with you through rough places. Real friends walk with you through rough places. Nehemiah chapter two, verse 11. You read it earlier. The Bible says, he said, I went uh, to Jerusalem, and after staying there uh, three days, verse 12, he said, I set out during the night with a few men, just a few men. Uh, he said, I had not told anyone um, what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem, and there were no mounts with me except the one I was riding. Now, there's a whole lot in here. Um, you all know if this was Tuesday or Wednesday Bible study, Pastor Jay would probably take about 30 minutes and we would just talk about verses 11 and 12, especially when it talks about uh, friendships and rough places. Uh, write this in your notes. There, there, there's often solitude and secrecy in dream casting. When you, when you are um, being sold on that dream in your heart, there's this um, solitude. Um, and, and dreams are personal at first. They're personal at first. Um, write down the word solitude. Solitude. A solitude is a lonely place. He said, he said, now I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there, I went there for three days. Then he says, I set out during the night. And most of this was done in secrecy. Write down the word also, secrecy. Secrecy. That means the condition of being hidden or concealed. Uh, um, as I said, dreams are personal at first, and, and dreams start out as personal things, and then they become public things, okay? So whether, it's, it, a lot of people don't know what's in your heart and how long it's been there until you make it public. Um, there's these night seasons, God, uh, no, I, I want to talk about that, that's connected with your dreams. Even though he was a man that dreamed with his eyes wide open, he had these night seasons, that I call them. It's when, it's when you, the rest of the world is not aware of what's happening to you personally, inside or out. Um, and only the closest people to you are going to venture out initially when you say, hey, I've got this, this thing, this dream, this thing I, I want to do. Uh, if you remember reading and go back to your Bible, there's a phrase, there were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. Um, what that's saying is that Nehemiah initially was the only person in his group that had a horse. Nobody else had a horse. 
he was the only one on a horse, and it appeared that he was at a different level than everybody that was with him on his dream. But what you notice is, is that there's nobody that turns back and say, well, he got a horse and I ain't got one, so I don't want to go with him. His level and his, his uh, gait going toward his vision did nothing to deter his friends, his real friends, from walking that evening or traveling where they had to go. Uh, it appeared he had an advantage, but it didn't do anything to uh, cast disperse on his, dispersion on his friends. So remember, what real friends do, even in the initial part of your friendship, they don't look, uh, uh, turn their nose up because you may be, it may look like that you've got more going for you than they do. First of all, you got to understand, Nehemiah had the burden of the dream. You know, they, they, they come with him as friends, and he doesn't have 1,700 people like uh, initially Ezra had 12 years earlier. There's just a few initially, and they build as they go. Somebody write that down. Uh, people that will support me, th that's going to build as I go. It may not be that way at first. And make any sense to anybody? All right. Um, the Bible says this in Proverbs 17 and 17. It says a, a friend loves at all times. Friends uh, gladly accept your good things in your life. So, so real friends, they are blessed when you are blessed. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So that's the first thing. Number next, real friends can handle the truth. Real friends, that's the next key, can handle the truth. You might want to write that down. Uh, go to Nehemiah chapter 2, and let's uh, go down to verse number 17. We read that at the beginning of the sermon as well. Um, it says, Then I said to them, those are the guys traveling with me, you, you see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. If you have your Bible, there's a couple of spots I want you to circle the word we. We. Because it's his dream, but it's their reality. He's, he showed them why God had catapulted him to this moment. He shows them what's going on. He says, you see the trouble we are in, but it's his dream to fix it, but it's their reality. Nehemiah, what he does is here, when you look at the scripture, he judges the condition of the people by the condition of their community. He said, we're in trouble. Not gonna, I'm not going to put it on the screen, but write down the word trouble in big, bold letters on your notes. Trouble, T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Simply put, uh, in the Webster's Dictionary, trouble means problems. You see the problems we have. You see the difficulty that we're in. And what you got to understand in 2021, listen to me, people. Uh, everybody's not racist. There's, there's enough races to go around. There's enough prejudice people go around. There's, another, there's enough class, classism people go around. But what tends to happen here in other nations is folks judge you by your surroundings. They judge all people by the conditions of their surroundings. That's why they call some neighborhoods good neighborhoods and other neighborhoods bad neighborhoods. Uh, they do that at 2 o'clock at night when all the stores are closed because they drive through those communities and they see what's there or what's not there. People even judge your church by the conditions that it is in physically. They, can, they, they might drive around your church and realize you don't pick up the garbage uh, in front of your church. You don't cut the grass. You don't, uh, uh, they come in the building and it is in disarray. People judge your home by the condition of your home or your apartment. So it's not so much the clothes you wear, the jewelry you have on. It, it's your surrounding. It's the land that you actually inhabit. Um, just for the sake of this sermon, write down the word land. Land, L-A-N-D. What is it? It's a territory over which dominion is exercised. It's your home. It's your schools. It's your neighborhoods. It's your country. It's your cities. And, and Nehemiah says to his team, people, we got some trouble on our land or with our land. 
And I want to just t turn that for a second and say you can apply that to anything that's in the second part of this definition, whether it's our homes, our communities, our schools, our neighborhoods, our countries, our cities. And the truth is the people without developed land are desperate people. Whether you're, if your education system is not developed to the point where your children can get the right type of education, you have trouble there. See, if you are a Mr. or Miss Nehemiah, you have no problem saying that. Obviously, it got that way some way. But we're not talking about that today. In the scripture that we read, we're not talking about how it got that way. We're talking about the way it is right now. So let's not talk about that right now, good people. How it got to be like it got to be on the south side. Let's not talk about, okay, how it got there. But what's the condition right now? See, too, too many of us sometimes, and it's good to have nice things, but sometimes all we want is things, and we forget about the surrounding communities. When, when, when others, uh, we call them aliens or people from other nations, they get to this land, whether it's legally or illegally, um, it's not often that you see they're looking for the trinkets, the rings and the, and the earrings and all that. They, they want land. They want property. They want something that they can... They can tangibly touch and change their situation. And, th and th those are the first things you see that develop in their communities, even though they may not even be able to speak the language properly. Write this down about land. Here, here's a key for you. Land equals possibility. Or tangible things equal possibilities. We at Vernon Park know that, yes, we have uh, our over 70 acres of land. And only part of it is developed after this first decade or so. But there are so many possibilities that it's staggering. And those possibilities can be transferred to generations. It's not just for cats my age, but it's, it's, it's younger people that, that either belong in the ministry or will join in the ministry later on that have the possibility of developing that land. And you may not have acres, you may have a building, you may have a business, but if it's something that is tangible, it equals possibility. Amen? Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19. The Bible says, He who works his land will have abundant food, but the one who chases fantasies will have his fill of poverty. What is fantasy? Taking all your money down to the boat. When you know that the house always wins. Taking your money down to the corner store and paying a, playing a lottery for 20 years and saying, I know one day my number going to come in. Those are fantasies. Getting on the internet and spending time uh, with somebody you don't even know trying to build a relationship. That's a fantasy. It's a freak of the mind. But the reality, if you work your plan on your land, the Bible says that you will have abundant food. And not just physical food, but whatever can feed your life and feed your generation. Write this down in your notes. The condition of the land has a direct bearing on the state of the people in it. The condition of the land has a direct bearing on the state of the people in it. Um, Bible students will tell you, they know, there are more, there are more than 1,300 verses in the Bible, in that Bible in your hand, that deals with land. The first thing that we read in our Bible that God blessed mankind with was a garden named Eden. That was land. Abraham's blessing was surrounded by what? Land. And even to this day, um, we know about the ancient Canaan, but even to this day, in that place, uh, which is historically Northeast Africa, we now call the Middle East, people still fight in war over small portions of what? Land. Land. Those tangible things. Communities. Neighborhoods. Um, again, the condition of the land has a direct bearing on the state of the people in it. South side, west side, the condition of the land. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Very familiar scripture. 
But when you read it, um, it is so apropos for even our season. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land, their community. Ah, thank you for that promise, Father. Let me give you one more point about um, real friends. Number last, real friends don't mind your blessings. Real friends, I ain't talking about some tiny people. Don't mind your blessing. I, I, I'm almost out of time, but I go to Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18, and he said, he's talking to these guys, these guys that he's walking with, talking, getting to know very well, and he said, I also told them, I told them, because I'm telling you my story, I've shared my dream, you guys, and shown you're going to walk with me. I told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me. So the first thing he talks to his real friends about are his personal blessings. He doesn't hold anything back. Yeah, I got a great job, great home, great family. I work in the palace. I have the ear of the king. I even know some of his secrets. Um, so I told them about, not just about my, my vocational blessings, but also when I shared my dream with the power on the throne, he blessed me. So that's the first thing. Because real friends, they don't, they, don't, they don't mind your blessings. And he said, they replied after I told them, um, he said, let us, they said, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Um, he talked about his blessings. He talks about the favor in his life. And the, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, let us start. They don't ask, well, whoa, who, 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 where, what? No, they said, just let us start. Man, them your friends. You know, you tell, you tell your girlfriend, look, I, God bless me with this and I need to do this. Girl, I'm going to come by and pick you up. Let, let, let's roll. Let's go. Look, you got, brother, you got a homeboy and, and you tell him uh, what, what God's put on your heart or what uh, your, your next thing is to do in your life. And he said, look, you want to meet and talk about it, Doc? You can run that thing through me. Run it through me. You know, I, I got some expertise in this over here. I ain't going to charge you nothing for it, but I can help you with that. See, those are the kind of friends you want. These are unconditional friends. There's no jealousy. There's no envy. There's no pulling back. You see it right there in Scripture. There's no pulling back. So the Bible says, so they began. Look what it says now. They began this good work. It's his dream, but it's their reality. It's his dream, but it's their reality. I praise God for the members and friends of Vernon Park Church of God that heard the vision and dream God gave me back in 2003, 2004. It was my dream. It was, it was something that I couldn't escape because the truth of the matter is that dream kept me at the church because those that know I had only planned to be the pastor for seven years, and this is my 22nd, 23rd year as a pastor, it happened because what God showed me. And I thank God. I thank God for those officers, members, and friends, as they said back in the Missionary Baptist Church, that stood and said, okay, pastor, it, so it sounds good. So how's that going to happen? So we began to study how it can happen. Now, I had my season of solitude. I had my season of dealing with it myself. So whether you have uh, a, a, a corporate dream like this or a business dream or a family dream or whatever it is, the reality is I can say from those members that are present and those that have passed on or those that were just friends for that, the first nine years of that season, I thank God for them because that's why it has become and becoming a reality. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Let's pray today. Let's pray that in this season where there's so many um, diverse ways of knowing people and not really knowing them, 
that even as you progress in what you're doing, some of y'all are going back to school, going back to work, some of you are going back into ministry, this might be good. You may be visiting today. You may want to make sure you just pass this, this video over to your pastor and say, look, pastor, watch this um, because I think he's speaking to us too. Amen. For what we're about to do at our church. So let's pray for all of us today that we can be um, very cognizant, be wise as, as we call each other friends. The Bible says that, that if you want to be a friend, you got to show yourself friendly. So let's ask God to show us how to do that. Father, thank you so much for this day for life and for health and for strength. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for Nehemiah's example of how he was uh, commissioned to do a hard thing. But Lord, you helped him uh, even as he traveled toward it and showed him that he had a good work to go forward. He could share his dream vocally with a few men and it turned into an army that finished the work of God. I pray for those today, Lord, that are asking that you give them friends for the season they're in right now. They've outgrown um, or they've outlived uh, friendships they've had in the past. So we ask, oh God, you would commission those uh, that need to come in and be with them on uh, these days. Um, that we go forward. Thank you so much for how you've blessed these people, uh, even at Vernon Park. Thank you, God, how you've blessed us to go forward. And we've made friends and we've seen friends and, we, and God, you've given us even more friendship. Somebody sang this song, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And I know that to be true. And somebody may be seeking that Jesus Christ right now. We thank you for the blood of Christ and of God. And I pray, Lord, that that person that's seeking you uh, that they would find uh, the love of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, you would baptize them with the Holy Spirit as you forgive their sins and set them on a brand new path. We pray, oh God, that they find a church or a Bible study or a group of believers that will help them to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we thank you so much for all that you're doing for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for praying with me. And you might have more questions about this gospel or about church attendance or about even joining our ministry. There's a phone number that's on your screen. That's the number to our church office. Uh, just leave a message. And, and, and it, even if you have a question, uh, you may want to leave your phone number or need to leave an email address, whether it be about uh, membership. If it is membership, we will direct that to our new members ministry. If it's about uh, Bible study or knowing the Lord, we will do that as well to our Christian Ed Department. Uh, make sure uh, that you leave uh, the information that you need and no one will call you and ask you for an offering or anything like that. It's just to help you in your walk or to go forward in ministry. Amen and amen. Well, just before we leave today, uh, for our members, uh, if it's your Sunday to pay your tithe or give your offering, feel free to do that right now. We're passing our digital baskets around. Uh, you can go to either PayPal or Tithely as you have been doing faithfully during this time of quarantine. Um, and, uh, and some of you have been continuing mailing your checks in. Feel free to do that. Uh, our post office box uh, is right there before you in our neighboring community of Glenwood. For those of you that are visiting, uh, and, and if you are a member of a church, uh, we encourage you to pay your tithe, as the Bible says, to your home church. However, if we've been a blessing to you today, and God's put a place upon your heart to send us an offering, plant a seed in, uh, in our field, uh, please feel to, free to use PayPal or Tithely as well, or mail your check to our post office box, and we will make sure that you receive a receipt of your giving. Well, this is Pastor Jay saying, uh, I've enjoyed the Word of God. Hope you've enjoyed it as well. Next week, we're going to talk about that other side of people you meet along the way in those dream journeys, uh, and that's the enemies. And uh, so join us next week as we talk about uh, real enemies, as we talked about real friends today. As you go on your week today, enjoy your summer. Uh, make sure you keep focused on your faith, family, and friends. Know that God is revealing himself even in a time where there's so many mysteries around us. So please stay focused, folks, and know that God is with you. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you next time. Peace.